All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Battle for West North Amateurs Cup. Uh, it's been a while, I know, since I had, well, any video up. Um, I've been ill this last week. It's been kind of a pain in the ass to get videos done, but we're back at it. We're going to be doing actually a few matches today. In fact, in this video, we may, depending on how fast things are, actually finish out the first round, which will be very, very interesting. Um, so, this is the first and actually only game in the match of Perun versus Greyer. They only managed to play one game, and then they decided to just call it there. I'm not sure what exactly the circumstances behind that were, but it was uh, it was decided at that point. So, and by the way, I have figured out, uh, mainly due to comments actually, how to fix this. You have to reset the, uh, the match right at the start by pressing that button that resets the replay in order to get the statistics window cleared. Otherwise, I think it starts with the end game statistics and then like builds on them. Very weird. In any case, we have Greyer playing the Rebels versus Perun playing the Northerners on Caves of the Basilisk. So, let's watch. Okay, so. Uh, Perun, as you can see, it is Perun's first match. He's, Perun has played in a number of my uh, Dominions 5 games. He's very good at Dominions 5, and he picked it up very, very quickly. Um, we'll see how good he is at this game. Uh, so we've got three Elvish Archers, an Elvish Fighter, and a Scout for Greyer's initial recruit. And for the Northerners, we've got a Naga, two Trolls, an Assassin, three Trolls, an Assassin, and two Archers. So interesting that i would say is kind of an interesting northerner recruit no grunts at all two troll whelps which are tanky but i don't know i don't like troll whelps as much as i like uh as much as i like grunts on most terrain they're quite bad actually because their defense is low so even though they have regeneration they take more damage up front which means they're more likely to be killed by an alpha strike the flip side however is they have defense that's just as high as anyone else on hills and mountains so troll whelps in the hills or mountains are very, very good defensive units. Troll whelps anywhere else are actually, I would say, worse than grunts. Um, they do less damage, and uh, despite regenerating, they just take more damage because their defense is lower by at least 10%. In fact, in, uh, in villages, I think all orcish units get 60% at least. But we've got a water unit going into the water there. Um, we've got... Uh, th I'm sorry, three troll whelps. I thought it was only two, but it's actually three. We do have an assassin. I think assassins are, of course, critical to good northerner play. So good to see one of those coming out there. An assassin is useful in every matchup except the undead. And, of course, now we can see uh, who is who. So Greyer is pushing very aggressively, actually taking one of the northerner's villages here during the day. But a little bit of a, little bit of a risky move, I would say. Scouts are not the toughest. And yeah, he's fallen back. So lots of kind of shuffling around. It is coming on nighttime, but I would say uh, pushing an attack for the Northerners it would be a little bit precipitous. Uh, yeah, actually, I think that was an accident. I think he didn't mean to attack with the Naga Fighter. He misclicked. Uh, unfortunate, but, you know, these things happen. Up here, we've got... Uh, up here, the Northerners have pushed forward very, very aggressively. Uh, I think they're probably doomed. This Assassin and this Archer cannot take these four units over here, much less the reinforcements that might come over to join them. We can see the Rebels have reinforced with a Shaman and a Mage. Uh, and over here, the... Well, the Orcish Warrior is actually out of recruitment distance from his base, which I think might be a mistake. <laughs> He is letting this Orcish Archer get pretty decent retaliatory damage, but like I said, I don't think it's a... I don't think it's a... a worry. Perun's coming in very aggressively. I think this is real common with new players to West Noth, and in fact, it's something that I struggle with still. Um, the tendency to attack far more aggressively than the situation actually warrants. I think this over here is more aggressive than you really want to be, even though it is nighttime. And the, uh, the Rebels are playing it safe. They are being cautious and not uh, not pressing the attack very much. But we'll see. The Rebels look like they're... Yeah, they've managed to kill an Elvish Archer. So right now... Right now, if we look at stats, uh, honors are even. But the, uh, the 
Rebels have lost a more expensive unit. That said... The Rebels have been quite unlucky so far. And it's daytime now, and I think probably Perun is about to get snapped back really hard. Possibly on both sides. I think these two units are probably going to die if they don't run. And these four units over here might be in some trouble from this pack up here, because Elvish Fighters are no joke. Risking poison on the, uh, on the archer, but I guess he thought it was worth it to hit that assassin. Okay, I've got more water troops. Yep, the, and he's falling back on this side, which is wise. But he's actually coming in to attack this formation. An interesting choice. He is going to get the Elvish Fighter, I think. Yeah, he got the Fighter. But... Uh, I still don't think this was smart. Especially this guy. This poor guy caught on the open. And the troll up here is taking some damage, of course. The Northerners are... Yeah, up here they're in trouble. In fact, I think generally they're... Not doing great. In particular, I think they're going to lose both of these units this... Yep. I say that as it happens, of course. What can I say? I'm a little bit slow. And plenty of free damage from the arrows coming out. So the Orcish aggression is being punished severely. Here during the daytime when they can't fight back very well. Uh, we've got another troll coming out. Yeah, this, this, uh, elvish archer is really holding down the fort against these naga fighters. With, honestly, little risk to herself. And just racking up the experience. Okay, so, just as a, as a minor point of strategy, what's important about this is actually not quite so much that the Northerners are losing, because they could bring reinforcements up, you know, Northern units are cheap. They could, if they really wanted to dedicate to it, feed a steady stream of units over in this direction. What's important is actually that they're losing units at dusk. What it means when you're losing at dusk like this, as a chaotic faction, is that you're not going to be able to push an attack during the night. In fact, you may not be able to even defend yourself during the night. This elvish fighter, if he levels up in particular, will be a huge pain in the ass. And these five units can probably finish off these two units and keep pushing, or at least consolidate their position on the defensive terrain, forcing the enemy to come at them if they come during the night on bad defensive terrain and take a lot of damage trying to push them back. Um, right now, I think Greyer is in a commanding position. Um, he's still overall been unlucky. In the sense that, yeah, he's inflicted more damage than expected, but he's also taken quite a bit more damage than expected. But, despite being unlucky, he's killed more units than he's lost, and higher gold value than he's lost. Which, against the Northerners, is telling. Because Northern units are, of course, cheap. Up, uh, Perun is throwing his commander into the mix in an effort to stabilize the situation. Always a dangerous call. And I think it's definitely going to backfire, because I suspect both of these two are going to die. Or at least the archer is going to die and units are going to wrap around. It is nighttime, but even so... Elves actually function perfectly well during the nighttime, being that they're neutral. I was really hoping he'd manage to, to level up fail bag there that he's renamed. Oh, okay, so he did manage to get the about to level uh, elvish fighter, that's good. But the elves have a significant monetary... Well, right now they have an income disadvantage. But they did manage to get the, uh, get the wolf rider dead. And point of order, point of order. 
That Naga that just died there was actually on like 40% defense terrain, I think, because I think land villages don't protect them very well. But right now, what you've got is, you've got the Perun's leader isolated. Yeah, it is nighttime. He might manage to take these three units and bust through both of these guys, which is definitely what I would try to do in his place. Um, but even, even so, he's not recruiting right now. And it's a little bit of a, I would say... It's interesting because right now, as I said, Perun actually has a significant income advantage. He's got 10 out of the 16 villages, and it's nighttime, and he's on the offensive on this side. But I would say he's still losing the game. And if we look at stats, uh, yeah, the stats definitely bear that out. The elves have killed 50 gold worth more of units. Uh, and as a result, the income disparity doesn't matter so much because he needs several turns of that kind of income disparity to make up his losses. I think he's definitely going to try to kill both of these guys, though. He's not going to flunk. He's not going to do it, though. Oh my god. Okay, the trolls are successfully punching their way through the Elvish defense. But it's morning. The offensive came slightly too late. And now the orcs are in a slightly difficult situation. And they can't quite get at Grayer himself. Oh, oh, close. So close to leveling and yet so far. But yeah, this is pretty much the end. Uh, Perun is on bad terrain. Probably not gonna live very long. A ah, little bit of a spiteful, uh, spiteful kill right there, which is always nice. So yeah, the orcs are just getting methodically cut down at this point, and the elves are about to go on the offensive in a big way because Perun is too far away to recruit. So even though he has a ton of money in the bank, he can't use it until next turn, by which time the elves will at least have reclaimed a bunch of villages. <laughs> Actually, yeah, they're just, they're just trapping Perun, preventing him from going to recruit at all. Which is uh, the proper strategy at this point. If they can kill Perun, um, he's pretty much out of units. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, that uh, that orcish word. He can get over there and recruit a full a full house, but he might not live. Perun may be able to... Okay, why did he only recruit two units? He's got a hundred... Okay, there we go. He's he's filling up the bank. Good. Whole bunch of units then. Uh, that troll is actually really close to leveling if he can live one more round. Maybe score a kill or so. He's not gonna, though. They're gonna make sure to put him out of his misery. <laughs> Real close. But now we've got an Elvish level 2 on the field. So, uh, Perun has deployed his reserves and, uh, and gotten a lot of units out on the field, but... I think it's too late for him. This force over there is quite strong. We've got a level 2 on the field over there. Yeah. Interesting, though. Perun is definitely fighting back very competently. Um, he made a big mistake committing his leader like that, but... Despite being in trouble now, he's doing his best to at least make it a slow and painful process. However, we're about to see a hero over there. Yeah, and three grunts are not going to be able to stop that attack for sure. And we've now got Merman in the water. <coughs> Merfolk against Naga. I'm not sure who that math favors. 
Uh, the Naga get a lot of attacks with relatively little retaliation, but then the, uh, the Merfolk also get a lot of attacks with no retaliation because they have ranged attacks and the Naga do not. Over here, these, these grunts are just gonna get picked apart, especially because they're standing right next to woods. So one of these archers is gonna step on the woods, get that sweet 70% defense, and become an enormous pain in the ass. Yep, okay, here come the ranged attacks. And yeah, that Naga is not having a good day. Grayer is playing a, a very solid game. Um, he's being deliberate. He's not being drawn into over-aggression, which is definitely one of the big things that can, uh, can sink a game that otherwise would have been won, if you know what I mean. But he's still definitely got Perun on the ropes. Like, there's nothing here to stop this attack, and this attack is quite strong. Plus, they're about to have, I think, yet another level two. Well, they tried, but nope. The dice decided not today. <coughs> Excuse me. Part, I've still got that cough hanging on. Yeah, so we've got strong attacks now coming in on both flanks. Perun definitely does not have the resources to stop both. He's got two high experience, uh, high experience Nagas, but I don't know that they're going to be super useful. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, the orcs are fighting, but it's not a fight they're going to win, just mathematically speaking. Mm. A kill on a scout. Nice. Similar Gronk. Nice. <coughs> okay, the Northerners are launching a daring counterattack to reclaim some villages up top, which will give them the resources to keep recruiting more grunts to stave off their deaths. But that said, they're also losing a lot of villages and, you know, villages and other things down there. Now that is an interesting move. I'd probably try to swarm that fighter, but eh, I don't think it's gonna... Don't think it's gonna matter. And Perun here concedes. A nice long game, 23 turns, but uh, as Perun at this point acknowledges, he can't really beat the sheer economy. And his forces... Um, I disagree with him on this. I think the forces that he has, if he concentrated them, could in fact beat either push. Or at least they could have if he had started moving last turn. Um, with this being first watch, he would only have one more turn of high damage. But, like, these elvish fighters are on open ground. And his orcish grunts are hitting for more damage than the elvish fighters while having more HP right now. He could also bring in his warrior. And I think he could probably... Like this guy, this elvish fighter... Odds are that these two units could take him out. 29 HP, he's got 36 and then 24 from these guys. So five attacks, each doing 12 damage. And he would have to hit four times, which is would require a little bit of luck. But I think odds are at least decent he could take out one of these guys and then get a unit into the space to help block. He's got this other troll whelp coming up. He could move these other guys over here. If he was free to concentrate, he could beat this force. The problem is, of course, that this force would come up behind him and absolutely destroy him while he was doing that. So, that's the only game between Perun and Greyer, and Greyer, on the strength of it, does advance to the next round. So now, let's go to the next match in round one. Nope, that was the wrong button. I am looking to load... Mr. Progressor versus Prey. Game one here, we have the Rebels versus the Drakes. Mr. Progressor as the Rebels, Prey as the Drakes. We're going to reset real quick, look at the stats window. I forgot to look at the stats window at the end of that match. Damn it. Oh well. We shall continue. 
Uh, so, Rebel Recruitment, including a Woes. Against the Drakes, uh, Woeses are a problem. Woeses do not do well against the Drakes, because most Drake units have uh, ranged fire attacks, which Woeses are horrifically weak to. Generally speaking, I would say of Woes as your first round, part of your first round blind recruit, uh, isn't a good idea for that reason. They're expensive, and they're only, uh, you know, they're, they're expensive and they're not useful in all matchups. Like against Loyalists, Woeses are really risky. Against Drakes, Woeses are very hard to use effectively. <laughs> They're marking Forest as potential Woes homes and future Woes home over there. One of the things that you do to keep track of Woes is the Woes has deployed at this point, so he's visible. He's not in any forests. And there are no forests close to him. Over here, we've got a little elf versus uh, Saurian fight, but launching this attack during the morning? I don't know. There's, there's a Drake Clasher right there that can go after the archers. Yep. Yep, there we go. <coughs> I think that that attack was precipitous on the part of Mr. Progressor. And he's definitely getting punished for it over there. He's lost a unit and taken significant damage to another. Got a couple of few merfolk coming up towards this Saurian. But he's trying to take out this fighter before he can run away. And he got him. Over here we've got a little bit of a face-off, but there's a lot more Drake power than Elf power over here. We've got a Drake burner and a collider. That guy's dead. Just super, super dead. But so far, I would say the Drakes have had a, uh, a pretty good match. Let's check my my instincts. Uh, yep. Yeah, the Drakes have only lost one unit. They've killed two. And they've been quite lucky. The Drakes have inflicted a, quite a bit more damage than expected and taken quite a bit less damage than expected. So Prey's doing well right now, mainly on the strength of aggression and luck, but I would say he needs to be careful over here, because this Drake Clasher is not as fast as the rest of his units, and might get a little bit isolated up there. He's getting some good hits on the Merfolk, but he's also taking damage in return, and his Saurian Augurs are quite flimsy. Yeah, so he's gonna lose another auger here, probably. Yep, there he goes. Um, uh, quick comment here. Um, this is an awkward matchup because I'm super weak to piercing, but I can just not buy dragons, get a shit ton of lizards, woes and fighters who really hate burners. Okay, so this is true as far as it goes. That said, I would still say rebels are not a good matchup for the Drakes because. Rebels can recruit reactively and function perfectly well against the Drakes. In general, if the Drakes are recruiting, well, Drake units, um, then Elvish Archers destroy them. Elvish Archers are a, a fairly hard counter to almost all Drake units, including Burners. Yes, Burners have a powerful Fire Breath attack, but they're still weak to Pierce by 10%. Um, and the... Elvish Archer attack is just as good, plus Elvish Archers have much better defenses. So an Elvish Archer can get onto the woods or something, and it's a nightmare for Drake Burners to deal with. Meanwhile, uh, Elvish Archers are still relatively efficient against every other Drake unit. Drake Fighters, Drake Clashers, uh, Drake Gliders, whatever. Elvish Archers beat them, and Elvish Fighters do quite well against them as well. If the Drake shifts to recruiting a lot of Saurians in an effort to counter that, the Rebels have the option to recruit Mages. Mages are a super hard counter to Saurians, because Saurians are weak to fire and have low hit points. They rely on high defense and skirmisher to accomplish things, and Mages, especially during the daytime, can actually kill a Saurian skirmisher in one round of fire. 
uh, because with the the fire weakness of 20 percent mage base damage is seven so they're doing eight times three with a 70 percent hit chance or nine times three uh, and then during the daytime it goes up to like 11. Uh, they're incredibly effective against Saurians, and they're, they win fights against Saurian Augurs. If you have a magic blast-off between an Augur and a Mage, the Mage wins pretty much every time. So, Rebels have all the answers to the things that Drakes bring. And they can recruit reactively and bring a Mage. They can have one or two Mages hovering around in the background, protected by the Elves. If heavy Saurians start coming out, carefully deployed Mages in the middle of Elf groups can sort of methodically pick off Saurian units and force the drakes to recruit drake units to counter that, because drake units are heavily resistant to fire. But, oops, the elvish archers and the elvish fighters are also there, so the drakes can't actually engage without getting swarmed and shot to pieces. Uh, so I think, honestly, I think this is a matchup that favors the rebels. Um, what's happening right now is that Prey is being uh, very aggressive, especially over on this flank, and Mr. Progressor has kind of been caught off guard and lost several units just to real, real aggressive attacks. I think he needs... I, if I was him, I would recruit a mage now, but... He didn't want to do that, I guess, so... That's alright. I don't know why he moved the woes off the village. Because he could have just left this guy in the water and had higher defenses overall. He is going to get that... Uh, well, nope, he didn't quite get that glider. But yeah, that guy just got speared because he was in bad defensive terrain. We got a couple of elvish archers up here ready to try and take out these drakes that are causing a problem. Uh, this woes is not really in danger. But the drakes might get him. Okay, now we've got elves on the forest and mountains, so a very high defense group of defensive elves up there. Those guys can work just fine. And over here we've got the beginnings of an attack developing against the elvish position. A couple of burners coming in to try and take out this scout, but you can see how much damage, even relatively low damage, elvish units are doing. Just in retaliatory damage. Pretty close to getting a Saurian Ambusher. Oh no, is it Swoley come again? Uh, clearly not. But okay, now we've got two Saurian Skirmishers close to leveling. And the Woes is getting burninated, so that Woes is not long for this world. <laughs> not long at all. But we've got a drake caught out by the uh, the piercing damage of the elves. Another drake caught out there. So now all of a sudden, the losses are starting to turn around. The drakes have now lost a couple of, of uh, drakes and a couple of saurians in fairly short order. So their losses are definitely mounting. And the elves are really kind of pulling it back. And they've got a fairly solid core of units up here. Now, that Woes is still just absolutely screwed by the Fire Breath. Um, and it is going down, down in an earlier round. But... Okay, well, we've got a level. We've got a Saurian Ambusher ready to go. I, I it, It's really it's time for a Mage from Mr. Progressor. It really is. I think a mage is the uh, is the plan here. And Prey is deploying his Drake Flare very aggressively despite having 40 gold in the bank. I would have this guy back here recruiting, I really would. Okay, we're gonna have another Saurian Ambusher. So we've got two level twos, admittedly fairly weak level twos, but still two level twos. Uh, <laughs> this Elvish Fighter has one hit point. So, uh, he's gonna die, but we do have two, uh, we've got two level twos with Skirmisher. Now, their damage output, Soaring Ambusher's damage output is not fantastic, it's very comparable to Elvish Fighters. However, they have more hit points than Elvish Fighters, and of course they have a lot more movement and Skirmisher. So basically, a Soaring Ambusher is an Elvish Fighter that you can put wherever you want. 
which is very, very valuable in West Knob. He's trying to go for the kill on this Drake Burner. Oh, and he does make it. That was a little bit against the odds, but I guess it was worth the gamble. He's trying to take out this Ambusher before he gets to good defensive terrain. Which is a worthy goal, definitely. But... Uh... He almost made it. <laughs> oh god, he put Swole in the name. It's a meme now. <coughs> Mr. Progressor seems to be losing some units. Just sort of casually, if that makes sense. Like that attack, there was no reason to make that attack with, with such a low HP unit. I probably would have run him down south in an effort to draw attention away. But um, the losses have really seesawed back and forth, and right now... Uh, right now the elves have definitely been kind of unlucky so far. He's really trying to take that Saurian Ambusher out. And there you go, he got him. 16 experience is not bad either. Okay, so he's willing to accept the retaliatory damage in an effort to kill this guy. Which is smart, because that Elvish Archer was about to level, and an Elvish Ranger or a Marksman is absolute death for Drakes. But he did take a lot of retaliatory damage in the process. Like, uh, an unfortunate amount. Okay. So... We've got an Elvish Scout running around down here, taking, trying to take villages back. Prey is definitely on the up, but he's got fucking 100 gold in the bank. Get this guy back here and recruit. Please, God. Um, because Mr. Progressor absolutely has the forces up here to stop this attack dead in its tracks and to kill the Saurian Ambusher. So those level 2s are really about to go to waste. Uh, honors are about even in terms of kills, but not in terms of gold. The Drakes have lost more. Uh, that said, I mean, the Drakes have been on the offensive, and they've been doing some good work. But it looks like they're, uh... It looks like their, their lack of recruiting is really catching up to them. Yeah, Prey, get that guy out of there. Uh, boy. Yikes. Super yikes. <coughs> yes, as Prey says, he might actually lose, primarily because he didn't recruit for several turns. Uh, we've got a Merman Netcaster. And the elves are uh, somewhat resurgent. But we've got a heavy, heavy load of recruitment from Prey. Smart, but he's lost a lot of momentum in the last few turns. That said, Mr. Progressor is coming on real, real aggressive. And that might come back to bite him, because he doesn't have enough units to support this kind of aggression, in my opinion. I don't know why he went in for a melee attack there. I guess he didn't want to take the piercing damage, but... Elvish fighters just hit so hard with their melee attacks. Okay, so it looks like they did pause the game there, uh, but, and then, of course, the replay continues immediately because they just loaded up the same save file. So, right now, uh, worth noting, Right now, the Drakes are working at a significant village disadvantage, so their income is quite low compared to the Elves. Um, that said, they've got nine units on the field. I think the Elves have got a comparable number. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's a scout up there. I think they've also got eight or nine. I don't know. 
I feel like the drakes are still in this game. For all that their attack definitely backfired on them. Since it wasn't, uh, wasn't supported. But there we go. Villages have evened up again. Unfortunately, this Drake Clasher is getting absolutely thrashed. We have got a hardcore Elvish offensive going in on this side. Uh, first Drake Fighter. Drakes are pulling back and redeploying to meet it, but they're gonna lose this Clasher, absent divine intervention. Oh, yikes. The dodge on that guy. Oh, wait, is this the divine intervention? That was almost divine intervention. I would have loved it if that if that clasher lived. <clears throat> okay, so they're trying to take out this Elvish Archer and doing a pretty good job of it. Alright, so one archer down. They traded an archer for a clasher, which isn't a great trade, but isn't terrible. That said, I think at this point, Mr. Progressor is on the up. I don't know why he recruited another fucking woes. Don't- I, stop. Wait, hold up, hold up. I'm just gonna say, don't recruit woeses in this matchup. Woeses are not good at killing drakes, because they get burned to death. They're also not fantastic at killing Saurians. Like, yes, if they hit them, they'll hit them really hard, since Saurians have low HP and a slight weakness to impact, but recruit mages. The thing about Saurians is that they have 60% defense on any terrain whatsoever. So if they're in any terrain, they're effectively in a castle. That's their, like, their quality. That and their skirmishy. So get something that has magic attacks to hit them and burn through their relatively low, lower than average, HP allotments. Um, Woza's do not make the cut. Yes, they don't take a lot of damage from Saurians, but they take a lot of damage from drakes. Like, one or two drakes can almost kill your woes, at least during the daytime. And then other units can swoop in to get the finishing blow. I, I would never recruit a woes if I knew that I was fighting drakes. I don't know, I, I'm not sure why that woes is there. Especially given what happened to the first one. Hey, that fighter is about to level, so that's going to be an interesting situation. But now the drakes are really, really struggling to hold the elves off. And by really struggling, I mean I don't know how they're going to do it. Well, I mean, they can kill that guy. Because he's standing in the open. But there's just too many elvish units at this point. Uh, Mr. Progressor is overwhelming the drakes with numbers and economics. A 10 to 6 village advantage is pretty decisive. To be fully honest. Okay, so we've got a level up to a Sky Drake, which is nice. I mean, level 2s are always nice. Sky Drakes are kind of like scouts, they're not, they don't do a ton of damage. But we've also got a level 2 Elvish Hero on the Elf side, and those do do quite a bit of damage. And it is over for Mr. Progressor. Or for Prey, rather. Mr. Progressor is winning. This is not a situation that uh, Prey can get out of. I wouldn't think. <laughs> He's trying to take one more unit down with him, but honestly, I would have just ignored this guy. If you want to maintain the game, uh, you just need to bring your units in to defend your, your commander, because otherwise he's just going to get surrounded and hit by arrows on all sides. The, uh, the, the breath will not dissuade the attacks. So, yep, there we go. Uh, and Mr. Progressor wins 
a, a great comeback by Mr. Progressor. His early game was rocky, but he uh, he pulled it out. He made it work. Stats wise, basically evened out. Pretty much even. He took slightly more damage than one might expect. But by the end, he had killed a lot more golden drakes than he had lost. Over 50% more. And that's what you usually see. Once the economics turn your way, um, it, they're, they're probably not going to come back. So, let's look at game number two. This has been going on for 40 minutes already. So, we're going to go through game number two, and then that is going to be it. We're not quite going to finish up round one. There is one more match to go. So, we've got Prey as the Northerners versus Mr. Progressor as the Undead. Northerners versus Undead is a complicated matchup. Um... The Northerners, Assassins, are not useful against the Undead because Poison is not useful. Except against Dark Adepts, but you do not want to attack Dark Adepts with ranged attacks, especially not at night. And everything else is immune to Poison. Uh, that said, Troll Whelps are quite efficient in this matchup because Skeletons have a 20% weakness to impact damage. And Orcish Archers are very good in this matchup because Skeletons and... Skeletons have a weakness to fire, and if I recall correctly, ghosts don't resist fire. So, fire attacks, fire arrows from the orcish archers can be, are efficient against pretty much every, uh, undead unit. Now, the problem that the orcs face, of course, is that, uh, they'll take a lot of retaliatory damage from skeletons, and then dark adepts are powerful enough to slaughter a lot of their units. So, starting recruit from Mr. Progressor, we've got two bats, two ghosts, a dark adept, and a skeleton. Fairly aggressive, fast-moving recruit. From Prey, he grabbed a village his first turn and recruited only three units. Two wolf riders and a naga fighter. So, lots of blade attacks, bad against skeletons, but once again, fast. Which is no bad thing. Uh, two grunts and a troll whelp for his second turn recruit. And Mr. Progressor has identified the enemy. And now Prey has identified the enemy. So now he sees vampire bats. What's he going to go for? Okay, he went for a goblin spearman. Uh, I wouldn't have recruited that. I know a lot of times you're tempted by goblins because they only cost 8 gold. But I... Mm, boy. I, I wouldn't recruit them under most circumstances. I definitely wouldn't recruit them against undead. Uh... Undead are just not the right target for, for Goblin Spearmen. Maybe against, like, Loyalists? You know, somebody who has a, a cavalry unit that's weak to piercing damage that you want something cheap to fight against. An Assassin, as I just spent some time talking about, is another very, very dubious recruit. Um, and having a Slayer as your leader in this matchup is kind of a bummer. But, I mean, that's just, just random. It is what it is. Like, you have to live with it. As like I said, though, the trolls in this matchup will be quite good. The regeneration and then the blunt damage against skeletons. Pretty much no skeletons coming out, though. It's ghosts, dark adepts, we had one ghoul. And yeah, the dark adepts and the ghosts moved in to make quick work of that guy. Now we have some skeleton archers coming out. The question here is... Are the uh, are the orcs going to be able to kill off a dark adept or two? Because that's the uh, that's the goal here. Okay, yeah, they managed to get a dark adept. So, killing a dark adept in exchange for a troll whelp is definitely a positive exchange. Like you can make that trade every day of the week and twice on Sunday. Definitely worthwhile. And we've got an orc grunt, a, another wolf rider. Units are kind of converging into the center here. I'm worried about this ghost, though, because if that ghost levels up, that could be catastrophic. Definitely need, need to focus some archers on that guy. <coughs> it looks like Mr. Progressor is focusing on leveling up his ghosts pretty hard, which is good tactics as the archer. Oh, okay. Took out an archer. And we've got a poison on the wolf rider. The undead have, have taken kind of a commanding central position, and the northerners really don't want to attack that position. Definitely time to play the waiting game a little bit. 
And it's really unfortunate that this Slayer is just not going to be effective in combat. So that Grunt is a dead orc. There's nobody around who can really help either. Uh, okay, so the, the Orcish Slayer is coming forward, <coughs> which I would say is a really bad decision. This guy does not want to be up here. I, oof. Oh, he's gonna try to, oh, he's real close to getting the Wraith. Mr. Progressor is very close to a Wraith, and he's also very close to just straight up winning by killing the enemy's leader. Yeah. Mm. Yikes. I think Prey's done. I don't think there's a way for him to save his, his Slayer here. Even killing that guy just opens up a spot for this Dark Adept. Yep, it's over. It's over. And he got the Wraith. <laughs> so, Mr. Progressor wins the second round in a mere 10 turns by Leader Snipe. Uh, if you random... Okay, so, Prey got quite unlucky in this game. Not statistically. The, st the stats were pretty much even. But he got unlucky in that he randomed a useless leader against the undead. Like, Slayers... just Against the undead, Slayers are just not worth anything. Yes, they can kill Dark Adepts, potentially, by poisoning them. But Dark Adepts are essentially suicide bombers. A Dark Adept is going to run in blow somebody up with evil magic, and then probably die unless there's enough enemy units to cover it. The other thing was, and this was something that Prey did to himself, his recruit for this matchup was really bad. Um, and some of it came before he knew he was fighting, but some of it came after. Blade attacks are not very useful against the undead in general, because skeletons resist them, 40% resistance on skeletons, and ghosts resist them, 50% resist on ghosts. Uh, and other units aren't very important. Like, yeah, ghouls don't resist blade attacks much. But if you're attacking a ghoul with melee attacks, then you the ghoul's got you right where he wants you. The ghoul exists to poison as many of your units as possible. That's all he wants to do. If you attack the ghoul with blade attacks, you're playing into the ghoul's hands. What you want against the undead is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of trolls and orcish archers. The trolls tank and inflict uh, blunt damage against skeletons, and the orcish archers use their fire arrows to kill pretty much every undead unit. Um, you may also have like a wolf rider or two to try and hunt dark adepts, but generally speaking, you're going to kill dark adepts by bashing through the front line of skeletons and then punching them with trolls. And at nighttime, Trolls can punch Dark Adepts pretty good. So, uh, I don't think... I just don't think his recruit was... I mean, if you look at, at his recruitment, what he recruited. Goblin Spearman. Worthless against skeletons. Not strong enough to make an impression against anything. Nothing on the undead roster is weak to Pierce. Orcish Grunts. They're okay. He recruited a couple of them. Uh, they don't do great against skeletons because, once again, skeletons have a huge resistance to their damage type. Um, and they can't fight back against Dark Adepts blasting them at nighttime. So, in this matchup, I would say a lot worse than they normally are. Wolf Riders. Fast. You can potentially use them to hunt Adepts or to, like, skirmish with ghosts. But overall, not going to do a lot of damage. Assassin. Worthless. Absolutely pointless in the undead matchup. Not going to accomplish anything. And Naga. Probably the most defensible of all the units out here. On this map, a Naga can run around having 60% defense most of the time. Uh, has a bunch of attacks that will do reasonable damage. Uh, they are neutral, so they can fight at all times of day. They can pressure the undead during the daytime. Uh, they can fight against ghosts because they can get an extra attack after all the drain attempts are gone, I guess. But honestly... 
I, I shouldn't say the most defensible of all the units here because, of course, he did actually recruit a couple of Orcish Archers. He should have leaned a lot more heavily on the Orcish Archers, in my opinion. Um, you can see here, Mr. Progressor recruited 225 gold worth of units. That implies that the that the Prey could have recruited similarly high gold value of units. And like with Orcish Archers, if you're spending 225 gold recruiting against the Undead, after your initial recruit, you should just be like Orcish Archer, Troll Whelp, Orcish Archer, Troll Whelp, Archer, Archer, Troll, Archer, Troll, Troll, Archer, Archer, Troll. I think that's the way to go. But in any case, um, got his leader sniped. Good game to all players. Mr. Progressor having won twice now advances, and there's only one match left in round one. So I'll show that one next time. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.